So before we get into this one, I wanted to tell you guys about an organisation called Brixton Soup Kitchen. And I wanted to highlight the amazing work they've been doing in their local communities because I really feel news like this needs to be promoted. Now Brixton Soup Kitchen started up in and around 2013 and since then they've served over 450,000 hot meals to homeless people quite literally all over the world and of course in London. Most recently, they've teamed up with a charity called ESPFDN that works with young people on Harrow Road, and they've started up another charity called the Harrow Road Soup Kitchen, where they provide hot meals and warm clothes to the homeless in West London. Here in the UK, for anyone who doesn't know, the school term starts back up in September after the summer holiday, but Brixton Soup Kitchen and their associates decided to take their initiative to push further in their endeavours by providing over 360 school uniforms and school supplies to families across West London. One week later, they did the same thing over in Brixton, which helped over 600 families out. Again, they provided them with uniforms and the school supplies they needed. A big shout out to MS, Benjar, Tropical Sun, WH Smith, Boohoo, Nike London, and Flavor Boss for sponsoring these charities, helping local communities out. And most importantly, all of these combined are helping children get ready for the next year of their education. Because let's not forget, children are really the future and education is key for these young people. In the pinned comment of this video, I'm going to leave both Brixton Soup Kitchen and Harrow Road Soup Kitchen social medias. If you could go and show some support, that would be appreciated. And they've personally told me if anyone is going through hard times at the moment, don't hesitate to contact them because they're there to help. Once again, a huge shout out to both Brixton Soup Kitchen and Harrow Road Soup Kitchen for the work they're doing and for helping out the local communities. But on with our first story today, and over these past two weeks, some protests have been going on in London, namely the Extinction Rebellion protests. I'm pretty sure if you haven't been living under a rock, then you would have seen the protests all over social media. For anyone wondering, the protests had started back on the 23rd of August and have only recently just wrapped up. Now, Extinction Rebellion, for people who aren't aware, have described themselves as an international non-violent civil disobedience movement. Now, their main objectives are that they want the government to declare a climate emergency that the UK government must legally commit to reducing carbon emissions to net zero by 2025 and the citizens assembly must be formed to oversee the change. But we're not here to get into the protests themselves, more what the fallout from the most recent protest has shown about the Metropolitan Police's attitude towards protesters are. In a report that has been surfacing over these past few days, it was noted that more than 500 arrests were made during the two weeks of protests. 508 to be exact. Deputy Assistant Commissioner Matt Twist has come out to say that nearly 2,000 police officers were involved in policing the protests every single day that they went down, adding that it's not the number of protesters which drew the large number of police, rather the level of disruption they caused by impacting other people. It isn't exactly clear why people were arrested, all the Met have came out to say is that it was for a variety of offences, and that nearly 200 people were arrested within the first four days. But what's your guys' thoughts on this one though? Do you think Extinction Rebellion are getting their message across by causing two weeks of disruption or do you think that they're causing issues for other people and two weeks is just way too much let me know your thoughts on this one down in the comment section below but moving on to our next story and if you follow me over on my instagram then you'll know that i shared this story yesterday and that's in regards to a data breach and leak of legal gun owners addresses in the uk and yes for anyone who doesn't know you can legally own a firearm in the uk now this story broke in july where the website gun trader had been hacked into Gun Trader is a website that's a similar format to Gumtree where you can buy and sell a wide range of guns legally of course. But again back in July it was announced that there had been a data breach and that people's personal information was out there. You might think that this isn't an issue, but it really is because it makes people a target for criminals. Now, of course, having a data breach is one thing which is a huge cause for concern, but for that information to be made public for the whole internet to see is another ball game, and that's exactly what happened last week. 
According to reports, the names and home addresses of over 111,000 British firearm owners were put online as a Google Earth compatible CSV file which pinpointed people's specific locations. Yes, the worst case scenario happened. This leak had came from an animals rights activist blog which told people to contact as many owners as they could in their area to ask them if they were involved in shooting animals. But of course, this causes an issue for gun holders because again, criminals could potentially have this information now and want to steal these guns which could potentially mean that people go on to lose their lives because we are talking about firearms. What makes this whole situation worse though is it isn't exactly clear at what point people own these firearms because there's information from up to five years ago on there. So let's say for example I was a legal gun owner three years ago but moved address last year my information is still on that website. So criminals could target innocent people's homes because they think they've got firearms at the addresses. Recently, the police have been issuing warnings out to firearm owners stating that guns should be kept outside of their homes and at shooting ranges in the case of a robbery incident. But we have to remember that this data breach is extremely serious with the UK's FBI, the National Crime Agency, even being involved in this investigation. The NCA was responsible for shutting down that Google Earth compatible CSV file which is no longer available online and in a statement a spokesperson came out to say quote, the NCA is aware that information has been published online as a result of a recent data breach which impacted GunTrader. We're working closely with the South West Regional Cyber Crime Unit who are leading the criminal investigation to support the organisation and manage any risk. But of course, if I do get any updates that come out of this situation, as always, I'm going to keep you guys posted on this one. But give the video a like for more crime-related content like this and make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't. It's been me, Ape Honcho, and I'll see you in the next one.